<laughs> Good morning, everybody. So Welcome morning. to Saturday webinar. It's uh, November 28th or 29th. 29th. So, um, Raleigh, did you want to start it? Is that what it? Who was going so, to start yes, this? Um, humancolony.org with our Saturday webinar. It's Saturday the 29th. Well, it's the 30th here for us in Australia, but for the rest of the world, it's pretty much the 29th. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Jim, who will be channeling today, and the rest of the people who are joining us, which are uh, Caroline, uh, Liney. We have uh, Haiyan, and from Sweden, we also have Gabriel. Uh, obviously, we have our lovely Sabrina, who's been helping us get this set up. We have James, who's also called Jim, and he's from New York, Nitrous Pegasus, our beloved Roxy, the wonderful Safira, and our lovely new person, who's called Shron. I'm not sure of her real name, but welcome. And there's loads of people watching on YouTube, so thank you very much for watching in, tuning in. I'll hand it all over to Jim and have a wonderful webinar. Hello, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I think we'll just start off for... I know it's not been a a great week for a lot of people. They've been here, but right now, I think we should all have a wonderful, positive uh, feeling going into today, and uh, just uh, bring that up and and feel that connect to one another and bring each other up. So that's a wonderful way to do community. So I love you all, and um, I don't know who is going to be here today of course, but um, is there any suggestions for somebody you need to talk to? And they'll unmute okay. yourself if you're going to say something. Okay. Anybody think, else? Yeah, uh, James from the Colony. And um, hey, Jim, should I share those messages from Takura and Arusha now or later? Oh, that would be good for, from, for now. Yeah, do it now. Okay, so to Kerr and so Arusha. Sephira received some messages from. Uh, I was just going to say you received some messages from Takur and Arusha, and they said to share them today, but I can't always remember what uh, they said. So I get the idea, but I can't. I'm not good at paraphrasing. So <clears throat> go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Takur would like to let you know that sometimes. Sacrifices have to be made on a smaller level for a larger purpose, and she means that figuratively, not sacrificing lives or anything. And she wants to let everybody know that once you've been connected to her or to them, that that connection never ever goes away. Uh, that's the first message. And so, um, uh, just a moment, somebody's knocking at my door. Hello. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, and the second message from Arusha. Arusha was very, very happy that everybody's struggling. <laughs> she said it's wonderful because it means that we're growing. And she said, imagine you may feel like you're under a cloud, but imagine a leaf or bud, a seed coming up from under a hard earth, and it still breaks through anyway, and it still grows. And she said to use the water of life to feed it keep feeding your seeds and your leaves to let them keep growing. Whatever the water of life might mean to you, a higher self, God, Buddha, higher masters, or whoever. Well, that was the message from both of them they would like to share today. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, I would also love to hear from, the, from someone on the colony. And be amazing and explore. Focus on the positivity. Don't cool. get dragged down by the negativity. Oh, someone on the colony. I don't think you can have your camera on. I, I okay, think I, it, I think I think it would be good if uh, Shell came um, and talked to us a bit, or um, maybe an Arcturian. Okay. I would enjoy an yeah, experience. 
Have we had an Octorian speak to us yet? Once, yeah. Well, actually, twice, I think, you had an Arcturian come, but it would be nice. I'm pretty very good. Um, your your camera is lagging, just so you know, and sometimes your voice. Um. All right. All right. This I they cleaned up my computer, but it's still slow. But I will be getting. Oh, you know what? Skype came back. How did that happen? I turned it off. You you need to sign out. Can you I sign did. out? I signed it all the way out. out. It says, sign, quit Skype. Yes. That's what the problem is. Hold on one moment while I quit Skype again. Okay. Quit. Okay. In the taskbar, if you right click, it was, I had to quit Skype from there. Came already quit it once. And yeah, Skype has a nasty habit of hanging around. I came back twice. Two quit Skype bars. Yeah, you're breaking up a lot, so. Yeah, it's. Hopefully it's the Okay, just bear with us while we deal with some technical issues with Jim. Yes. Yes. So, yes sorry. So Can in you the mean. Go ahead, Jim. Can you? All all kinds of things are opening up, and I'm trying to quit Skype. Look. This is Skype. Let's say quit Skype right here. Right? What is this? Okay, with the camera off, we can hear you quite well, Jim. So. Alrighty. Uh, sure, you want to quit Skype right here? Just that. Thank you for helping him. Yeah, I can't to, see. To our viewers, um, I guess, I guess. Now Google, now YouTube is working because there's six viewers now. Hello, how are um, you? Yes, I get with their help. I think I closed everything here. Um, you know, I had had this idea of on my other computer starting a hangout. Yes. <laughs> so that the other ones could listen and somehow participate. So. No, it's over here. Oh, yep. All right, very good. All righty, very good. Okay. We're all good here now, I think. Okay. You just can't see me. <laughs> That's, okay. That's okay. Yes. Okay, anything before we start? I'm sorry there's been so many technical... Difficulties, but when I get the computer for downstairs, it should be much better. So this one up here, like like we had said, is on its last legs. So we need to um, get that new one here, so we can, we can uh, do a better webinar. But for now, we're okay. So uh, do you want me to see who's coming along now? Yes, please. Okie dokie. And I'll up. I play a little bit on my <laughs> on my phone like Max does. <laughs> okay, very good. Get ready, play on your phone, and I will do some uh, uh, meditation here. <sighs> um, hold on. Before we get started, um, I noticed the title says November twenty ninth. I don't hear him at all. 
the title for today's webinar. It's okay, Jim, if you get yourself ready to channel. Um. Yeah. Um, Pegasus, we can talk about it later. Okay. He did, he's not coming through. Okay, very good. Your music. Hello. Hello, Lakesh. Hello, it reminds me of something I've heard before, yes. Hello, Lakesh. Hello, how is everyone today? Hello, Lakesh. Thank you. How are you? I, I am very well. Thank you very much. How is everybody today? We are good. How is everything in your planet? Wonderful. I'm having a wonderful day, yes. Great. Is there a question? Um, I I heard somebody ask for me, so maybe there is questions for me too. Oh, there is always questions for you, Lakesh. <laughs> so um, we will start. I guess who requested Lakesh? We will start Ooh. with that person. How's that? I did. Okay, and. We will try and limit our questions to three today, because so, I'm sure there are 14 viewers today, plus the people here. So go ahead, Pegasus. Um, hi, Lakesh. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you? Um, you, you mentioned... Speak um, in the last webinar that there would be a green alien that is interested in me. I don't know if you've been getting my questions about her. Um, I've been trying to meditate on it and find out who this being is. Are you able to tell me? I am not able to tell you yet because it has not been completely approved yet, but there is a green, green alien that is interested in you and they are from very far away. So it is um, not going to happen soon, but you can continue to pray about it and may bring that may bring it sooner. However, I can tell you that she is very anxious. She's very anxious. Thank you. And, and she is very uh, interested in many things about Earth. So she is not just interested in the sexual things. She is interested in Earthlings as um, personalities as well. Yes. She finds you very, very, um, uh, what is the word? Very, very, well, I guess third dimensional would be a good word, but um, because she is not actually third dimension, she would have to come to the third dimension to be with you. But um, But you, she's a uh, very a lot much lighter in some ways than you. Yeah. What other questions? Um, I have, well, I have one more question, and a friend of mine has a question. Um, yes. For me, um, I want to know um, what it, uh, what it is it, it is that I'm doing in the colonies. 
Right now you're doing telepathic work and channeling work. So that is all that you're doing in the colonies right now. They will have you to uh, doing languages and other things, but you really don't need that right now. What they are more concerned about is telepathy and channeling right at the moment. Uh, yes, thank you. And a friend of mine, his name is Cuisine. He says that he is in contact with a Lyran whose name is Ezek Truss. He wants to know if this Lyran is real. What was the name? I can ask to Kerr. The name was Ezek Truss. Sometimes I get some leering words mixed up. But that is the, she is aware that they are talking to someone on Earth, yes. Does that answer your question? It's um, you cut out because you made... Yes, you cut out as well. Um, yes, there is a real person with that name. I did not pronounce it correctly, but... There is a real person with that name, yes. Okay, thank you, Vikash. Okay, Gabriel. Yes. Uh, I would like to invite you, Lakesh, it's me, Gabriel, to visit me in Did my you tonight. <laughs> There will be some visitations for you soon, very soon. Your orb is working very well. It's now at home, and that is a good thing. It's moving up and up. You can feel it more now, can you not? Yeah. Yes. And I love it very much. That is good. And it will continue. You love it very much. It loves you very much, too. They love you very much. You made it for you. Yes, I, I find the energy to be... Right, but tomorrow good. night it will be activated. I cannot hear you. We can almost not what hear did you, you say? as well. We can almost not hear you. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Can you share that again? Okay, I will. I will try to speak louder. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the problem. It was. The I think it's our internet. It's the internet. Yes. Oh yes, that thing. Yeah, I I said that. Let me see if I can. Hold on one moment. Okay. And I will strengthen the internet. I will try to do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh wow, that was some serious. Because we are having. Some internet issues today. Caroline, I love your child. <laughs> so, we will She's going to the internet. But we can hear you. Is it working? Now. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm working uh, on the internet connection. One moment. Beautiful. Loud and clear, Akash. There we go. Yes. Can you share that it I love the, love the being who helped with the orb? I find there a need to be very interesting. Very good. Now yep. you can hear me very well, can you not? Yes. Very good. I have strengthened the internet connection at least temporarily. There we go. Okay. Can you share what you shared before so we can hear it? What was it about? Which thing was the I orb. sharing? The orb. Ah, yes, the orb will be activated some more in a couple days. 
But for right now, it is activated at 44, 45%. 45%. Yeah. And you, it is helping you out a great deal, is it not? Yes, I can feel it stronger and strongly, so I love it. And yes. I would, like, like, would have... like, like to play with you in my dream time, if I can do that. That's fine. We will be able to find some time. Yeah, and Ro Ronnie asks, have she been to the colonies? And which colony has she been to? Who? From Nor Rani, a member from Norway. Ah, let me check. I do not have that information readily available. I can talk to to her. She is listening in right now anyway, so Ikorata. She will be going to the colonies soon, but she has not gone yet. And actually they did some preparation with her so that she would be more acceptable in the colonies. I mean, uh, that she would get there easily, more easily. So perhaps if she's had some dreams or things of that nature, it is from the preparation. Lakesh, did you share that I was going to me connect to those who created the orb war? Was that what you yes, shared? Yes, you are going to connect with them. They connect with you all the time when they work on the orb, anyway. So you feel their presence, for sure. From, from what, how many beings are working on the orb? There are three different ones, but they do different things. So it's there's different parts of the orb that are activated at different times. So it is three different beings, but the one that is most there at this time is the actual creator of the orb. So you have a great energy with him, yes. Oh, from which pieces are it? He is a Noctorian. Okay. Huh? Is that's everyone that's... hearing me much better now? Yes. yes. Thank I'm you so much. Fix that connection better. You see, he says there's no miracles. Ah! <laughs> oh, Rowie's next. Go ahead. Hello, Tash. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Fantastic. Oh. I have a question regarding our solar system. Would yes. you be able to answer my question about this? It depends on what it is, but most likely, yes. Okay, here we go. Now, there's been said that there is a singularity located near Saturn. Yes. Are you or Gert Fenier able to confirm or deny this? Yes, it is. There is a singularity near. Yes. So the film Interstellar has some truth to it, yes, correct? Yes, the, actually it's not exactly the same, but it is similar, yes. There is wow, much that's fantastic. There's much information that you have in your movies and films that are very accurate, and the reason for that is they were set images the creators were sent images so that they could prepare people on Earth for what is to come or knowledge that is not yet readily available to them. And therefore, when it actually does exist and they understand it, they will have had a visual of it of somewhat and an understanding of somewhat of what it is and are not so frightened or taken aback by it. But they are surprised. Do you know it's a, of its origin? Do you know who put it there, why it's there, etc.? Um, it is very ancient. It's been there for a very, very long time. It's, it's from, I'm not sure exactly the name of the species, but they are from the uh, Taurus constellation. You would call it the Taurus um, constellation. We just got asked what a singularity is by another member. Um, it's basically like a black hole or a wormhole. Yes, it's very small. It's not really very large, but it is. It is a a way to. Many people think it's a travel port, but it's really not. It's an energy feed, and it, the um, they have it made so that the energy that is coming into it is fed into an area that needs the energy. Does that make sense to you? Because usually people think that a black hole just eats the energy and becomes larger and larger. This particular black hole 
pushes through, it's a very long, narrow black hole, and it pushes through the energy to the other side, pretty much. It's an energy booster. It's a booster. Wow, that's fascinating. Thank you. But it's not very large. But you can see it through in uh, at some periods of time in your telescopes. Yes, I was wondering about if we could actually make it out because we've tried to do research on this, and unfortunately, um, there's nothing. It's there's only about nothing, 30, uh, miles, thirty miles across, so it's not very big. Wow. Well, we look forward to seeing more of this and being aware of this on our planet to help with uh, the increase of activity with extraterrestrials and yes, this is interesting. Yes. Okay, yes, that's all I wanted to ask today. I'll all right. hand the mic over to somebody else. Is the internet connection still good? Correct. Yes. Very good. Who's next? Oh, okay. Hi. Hi, Lola Cash. Hello. How Hello, are you? It's Sophia. Good. Yes, I know. Um, <laughs> I have a question. I had a dream. No. Um, oh, did I? I think did I... One Sorry, moment. Sophia. Okay. Continue. Oh. Okay. I had a dream a few weeks ago <clears throat> that I was sitting, it was a little bit like a hospital area, and there was a, a child being born, and the woman there said to me, thanks to you, it's been born, although I wasn't actively the mother. So I was wondering if I had a um, hybrid child, maybe, that I didn't know I contributed to. No, this was a... This was a symbolic message to tell you that because of you, hybrid children can be born. And they were giving thanks to all the people, and you were one of them. Personally, they wanted to give thanks that you believe and that you are able to help them with this process. And your child will be born in February. Okay. So if I wanted more hybrid children, aside from the one that I share with... And you will have more. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. It is already in the works. However, they will let you know that. Grokfrik Nier is already working with many to have more hybrid children. Okay, thank you. And I have I have felt rather distant, distance, distant. <laughs> Sorry, I hit my head last night. I think I'm a little spaced out. Um, I have felt some distance to the colonies, but. Have I been there and been active as well in the channeling? And, and Not work? lately. There are things that you are going through right now that per, that they would rather not have you come at the moment. But uh, they will have you come whenever these things clear up a bit. There are some things that we will talk about personally. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Lakesh. It's good to hear you. Good to see you. I'm in, I just intensified your internet connection. It was very bad. Oh, wow. thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Lakesh. Thank you, Lakesh. Um, hello. Yes, hello. hello. Can you wait, please? We, we have a line here. Oh, thank you. That's why I I hear many voices. Yes. Um, uh, I have a question, Lakesh. Um, it's about Nash. if everything yes. exists uh, here and now, and there is no time. Then how is it that we have befores and afters, such as a child needing a mother to be born? There's all kinds of nows, but the one you're living in now is the most important. What There is past and future nows. You have created past and future nows. They are in a circle around you, and you can access them in, in the future when you become more understanding of how time is. It's, 
It's actually very, very simple, but it's beyond your concept right now. However, simplicity sometimes is more difficult to understand than complexity. Does that make sense to you? But anyway, um, the, the nows that were before and the nows that are after are part of the lessons of now. I cannot really explain it to you. You will know more about that in the afterworld, on the oversoul. It will be much more easy to comprehend. To try to have you comprehend it at this point would be actually not good because it doesn't matter. You're in third density. Third density nows are very much solid. Everything seems, the past seems so solid, the future seems in some ways, whenever you reach it, it will seem very solid. Okay. Um, in terms of what Roy was Roxy. asking... Hmm? Yes? In terms of what Roy was asking you about the singularity, how does that yeah. affect us or benefit us? It is not really affecting you or benefiting you in a very strong way, but slightly. It is the energy that's being pulled into it is affecting you a little bit. Uh, some asteroids have been pulled into it and things of that nature, but it's really not affecting you at this point. If it, if it grows in size, that is, a, that is a possibility that it could affect you. However, at this time, it seems to be rather stable, and it is narrow. It's only 30, feet across, 30 miles across, and it's, it's rather... Actually, it's not an exact circle. So it's it's sort of an ovalish looking thing, and so it's thirty miles by about twenty six. So it's, but it is very stable at this point. Interesting enough that it. Okay. Um, and the other question I had was that I got I've been speaking a new language the last two days. Ah. And, um, I don't know. If, I don't know if you can figure it out without me speaking it. Um, and and well, I, I felt. Would have to it. Yes. Mm hmm. You would, would have, have to. to it. Okay. Because the bean, I think the same. The, the bean that's been also with me. Um, I was. I felt him very close to me, and I was like. Trying to touch his face. Yes. Um, yeah, that. If you give me the language, I could pretty much tell you what okay. being it is. Okay, let me let me see. Um. Da la nu olia liyo da sana kuwa tio olua sana kuwa. Tolia suotu akatua nasia ya. Tola sakada tontua nasiotu. Halana ua siya la tu. Posata aluana sakatu olaka. Sanalia salia tu. Okatua nasuata. Ah, it's Fendorian, Planet 2, Language 3. Um, they have several languages there, but uh, they have a few planets as well that they are inhabit now, and that is a form of Fendorian. Oh, okay. So they seem to be around... They are closer to your world now than they have been before. Like uh, many have reported that there are many species coming toward the Earth some have already arrived, and it's causing some confusion with Grukvikneer because they can't control the weather and all the things, and all these different people that are coming, these different species and ETs or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, uh, there is a difference between an ET and an alien, by the way. An alien has no, an alien has no connection with the Earth, and an ET is 
extraterrestrial is a hybrid. I just learned that recently. Oh, thank you for that. Yes, because I, I heard it said, and, and I was wondering the same thing. Well, what's the difference? So. Well, yes, I just was wondering, because when I read, when I study your languages, you do not have that distinction from extraterrestrials to aliens to off-worlders and all that different things. It, it's usually a very generic um, statement, and it does not include that. You know what I mean? So yes. I, I wanted to add that. I think that that is an interesting specification. Now, the, so the being, are being called aliens. Okay. <laughs> the um, the being that was with the with me that <clears throat> was in front of me that I could feel, and I was yes. trying to touch his face. Was that a the Fandorian also? Yes, in a holographic form. Was he short? Yes. Yes. He, a short, uh, was his face very pale or was it very blue or green? I couldn't see the face, but I could feel the presence and I was trying to feel, could you the, feel the contour. Face? Yeah, I was trying to feel the contour, like I was feeling the contour of his face. Did it feel like sort of hard, plastery? Mm. No, I didn't. I I don't think I got I got that much out of it. Um, oh, I see. I understand. But yes, it was a Fendorian. If it was a short and um sort of human looking, not quite. It looks like a human with plaster on their face, sort okay. of. And yeah. so that's one species of Fendorian. There's. Just like on your planet, they had some hybridization early in their in their creation processes and their evolution processes. So there's different uh, varieties of Fendorians, just like there's different varieties of Earth. Do you understand? Yeah. Is there any chance you can give me a name? Um, he did not give a name, actually. Okay. Um, if he gave a name, I would be able to tell you, but he did not. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Greetings, Lakesh. Hello, how are you? This is Noha. I missed you so much. Ah, oh, thank you. I miss you as well. Thank you. Your, very much. your energy connection is very strong. I do not have to have to even work on yours, but really? that is good. <laughs> yes. Work on me anytime. Take me to the colony. <laughs> I'm maintaining the internet connection. Actually, it's very bad in many places, but I have a stream of energy going through so that this connections will maintain. Everybody having a better connection now. Thank you very much. Well appreciated. Lakesh, I have three questions and I'll be quick. Um, yes. I'm working on the creating my reality. So in terms of, of manifestations, uh, I need to tr be transferred somewhere uh, so to, my, to where I am. So will that be possible? Is it working out? What do you think? It is working that your reality, you are building your realities. There are things around you that are, hold on one moment. Thank you. I took I take it back. Your internet connection just went bad. Hold on. Okay. It started off very, very strong. But I've been yes. Waiting. That's why. My connection isn't good. That's why I've been waiting for some time and I, I'm afraid it could you know, leak out or something. Okay, you are Yes, you are you are building your uh, own futures, and yes, your e own reality. Have you noticed that there are some people that are moving away from your realities? Yeah, that is okay. <laughs> that is what that I... That is what I'm saying. Yes, That's there are some people that are moving away from your reality because you did not build them into it. So that is good. If you are noticing that they're moving away because they cause negative... Uh, exactly. interference with your own reality and resonation, you are noticing that there are some people moving away right now, correct? That is true. That is true. 
and I your reality is becoming your reality is becoming a little happier, a little more smooth, a little more creative in some ways. Is that correct? True. And I'm talking about my transfer. I need to be transferred. You need to be what, dear? Transferred. Transferred. Uh, yeah, going relocated somewhere else. Ah, yes. That will happen, but give it a little time. One moment. Thank you. Give it a little time. Creating a reality is it does not come overnight. It comes sure. from a series of thoughts, uh, meditations, intentions, and uh, personal growth on your part. And when it, the time is right for you to relocate, you will do so. Great, thank you. That's the second question. Uh, could you please yes. update me regarding my development in the colony? Because colleagues of mine in the colony have said they've seen me up there. So could you yes. tell me what I've been doing? And I need to nourish my mind. I have no memory at all, you know? That is all right for now. They are working on helping people later. However, and but the thing is about subconscious information is it comes out when it's needed. Do you understand? So it is not a waste of time to go there and not remember because this information will come out when it's needed. However, what you are doing is more telepathic. And one moment. You've been in almost all of the colonies except for three. You've been in one, two, four, and five. So oh, there's you've the fifth one. There's a fifth one. I don't know about the fifth one. What is it? That was just an entertainment colony. That's oh. the one that they, they have for entertainment, but you wanted to see it and experience it, so you were there, and you really enjoyed yourself there. So that was Yeah, cool. I love the entertainment well, business, actually. You are someone that enjoys humor much, so um, that you were there for quite a while enjoying yourself. So, mm -hmm. yes. But you have been to um, once to that colony five, once to four, okay. and a, couple, a few times to one and two, according to Tukur. Okay. Then, Lakesh, the last question about my tennis bracelet. I didn't find it yet. You didn't help me out in that case. What was that? My tennis bracelet. I didn't find it yet. Remember, you told me you'll help me in finding it. I find what? My tennis what bracelet. The tennis uh, bracelet. Mm -hmm. Ah, one moment. The I'm working on the internet right now. Just one moment. Yeah. There is a reason why it is lost. Why? Why? It, I cannot tell you that, but you will know the lesson is for you to learn and not for me. So it's not going to be found yet? It may be found, but you must learn a lesson first. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I will leave space for others to come in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a Thank wonderful you. day. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Very good. Hi, Hi Jan. Ah, hi, Jan. Yes, how are you are doing? Um, good. How are you? Good. I am very well. It um, is good to see you. Good to connect to you as well. Yes. I um. Dwarfs. Can you say something about dwarfs? Which kind? Are you talking elemental dwarves or are you talking human dwarves? Human dwarves. What would you like to know? Why, how come they exist in that fashion? Is it... Actually, uh, it is part of the... In some cases, it is part of the hybridization that happened many thousands of years ago. It is the, the lock-on of certain elements in the DNA that cause it. But, you see, they look uh, much like... It is not a bad thing. 
they might not experience life exactly the same way as you do, and there must be many lessons that they can learn, and they were already given permission in their contract before they came to Earth that this would be a trait that would be um, very high in their DNA. So they already knew before they came that they were going to have this condition. But it is a condition that helps learn some lessons about prejudice and things of that nature without going through life in um, even a more altered form. Some will learn lessons about um, crippling diseases and things of that nature without having them. Do you understand? Some would learn what? Crippling diseases? They would learn about how people with crippling diseases feel because they feel oh. that sort of disconnect, if you Being will. Being outside. Yeah. 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 So I, I guess it's the, the same reason for for them to incarnate those who are disabled in any way. Yes, very to, much. To experience that. And also to teach us to be more uh, empathic, telempathic. Yes, it is not a lesson only for them, but for humankind as well. Yeah. To yes. get out of the brain and get into the heart. Yes, it is very much like that, yes. Yeah. Because... Let me say more about that. And also, with that stature, they learn to be normal, even in their abnormal size. Their, their consciousness, their thought processes, and many of the things that you feel, they learn to understand and integrate into their lives. Because at first, it is not like that. They're when they first realize that the growth has stopped there is much questioning and thought a, a, an unusual thought pattern about that why they they feel as if they are a victim but after a while it is not so do you understand yeah and some even learn to enjoy it even better than some normal size people yeah yeah but okay. there are many scenarios with that so and many lessons from that kind of a thing yeah you were breaking up a bit before but I I guess what you said was uh, that in our junk DNA we have a lot of uh, different species that yes. is called junk DNA but is just non-activated alien DNA. Well, it can be activated in the junk area as well, but and it assimilates into the regular human DNA eventually. Yeah. I am working on the connection as we speak because it is bad across the board. Yeah, but there it's, is it's clear. The it, there's something in the atmosphere that is really um, not very helpful today. So, But I'm working on it. Okay. Would so so I guess that that dwarfs has uh, awakened that trait, that DNA to to that species. Would yeah. it go the same way for Asian people, black people, or yeah. are they also activating a certain connecting to a certain race? They can be yes. And or is that why they are black or Asian looking? Or for the experience, there's different reasons why people make um, their lessons to be learned in different ways. And some are not connected to alien existence, but just to different kinds of lessons, learning about prejudice or learning about um, how to move through that culture or whatever it may be. Uh, it does not necessarily mean that there is an alien influence in it, but there definitely is a contract with it for learning lessons. Yeah, to incarnate as a black. Yes. 
But it Guess is what? wonderful because the lessons that are learned are very, very special and very wonderful. All the lessons that are learned are wonderful. Now, there are those that incarnate and never learn that lesson, and they have to come back and do it again in a different way, perhaps. But they still did learn many things about being in that situation that they would have not known before, but they did not learn all the lessons that they were supposed to learn. Do you understand? Yeah. But they cannot help but learn something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, to how to? I've been connecting to past lives uh, recently through meditation and such. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna see if I'm on the right track, on the right path. So, are you, you connected? You were connect thinking, yes, I know that you were a knight in one past life. Is that correct? Yeah. And you were actually in battle. You were in battle. Yeah, yeah I saw yes, that. I know that. Yes, there is definitely that one. And um, that is... That is that Sasquatch? Very, well, that was many, many thousands of years ago before... Um, there is some truth that it was not actually a Sasquatch, but it was a, some, a being similar to that on the Earth. But yes, it was 3,000 some years, 3,400 years ago, that that was a scenario for you. So. Okay. But you came, and that was a contract also, but it was a very short life. You were killed. Mm. Okay, okay. Yes, well, you then it's very easy to, to do that, I guess. I learned it very quickly. So there you have it. Yeah. Okay, which race am I connecting to when I see the white spots and the white orbs? It could be several. There, some connect with white orbs and spots a lot. Uh, there, you could be a reptilian. It, it could be, um, let's see, a Fendorian, and then it could be uh, Arcturian that sometimes uses spots. Um, and even Lirans sometimes use spots, but it's different. What, are they multiple? Or are they just single? Or how big are they? It it all depends. Single, on but it varies in sizes. But mostly, it's a spot. It's one spot. Usually, that's reptilian. Then. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. By the way, what uh, what reptilian race do I uh, am I connect with? We were connected to more than one reptilian race, but um, right now, um, the one you call Grindel or Old Riser, you're connected more to his race at this time. Um, they seem to have a great interest in Earthlings right now, and Grindel seems to be the uh, the uh, what are the the catalyst? That's the word. The catalyst for them being interested in humans. He comes back with many interesting stories, and so they are hanging out with more humans, some of the species, and finding them very interesting and comical and things of that nature. One moment. There. Are you okay now? No, he's not. Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, your connection is good now. Okay. Hey. I will pass the mic, and if I can connect to you again, I will. Until then, namaste. Namaste. Have a wonderful day, too. You, too, as well. Hello, Lakesh. It's Rory again. I have two questions Hello. for you. Yes. One of them is from a member. Uh, her name is Nisa. Nisa. Hello, Nisa. She's asking about a, uh, a colony question. Is this something you're able to answer for us? Takara is listening in, so yes, I will be able to answer with her help. Yes. Thank you, Lakesh. Let me just scroll up one second. Uh, Nisa was told in a webinar that once she had been to Colony 1, telepathically, 
and she says she think maybe it was the Kesh said um, this, and, and she's wondering if she's been there again. What is what? What did she do there? And she wrote an email asking for some help and asking if they have read it. Wonderful. Just a point. Just you get that. Yes, she's been there a second time. They work on telepathy. They, she has the beginnings of a language as well, but they are not working on that quite yet. Okay, that's fantastic. And the second question is from Kim, and she's asked me to ask it. Hi, Lakesh. Hello, Kim. How are you? Very well. It's lovely to see you. Lovely to see you as well. Thank you. You want to ask? Uh, I, I was just wondering, Lakesh, with regard to uh, the spirit realm, um, as far as aliens go, do you have contact with spirits, for example, that Jim uh, channels through for us, like uh, Jesus Christ and Buddha, uh, John Lennon, those kind of yeah. spirits? We, as much, we have a little more availability to spirits than you do. The dimensional shift is lighter here. Fourth dimension is lighter, so that is actually closer to uh, a spiritual realm than where you are in the third dimension. So we do have a slightly stronger connection, but we do get to them the same way that you do through others and bringing them through in other dimensions and things of that nature. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. To call on them oh. and get a better reaction, perhaps, than you, because our dimensions are more similar. Do you, do you understand? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. So, yes, in the case of your daughter as well, yes. Hold on. Thank you, yes. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm continuing to keep the connection. It could, could have dropped several times already, but wow, it is very interesting. Continue. Who's next? Coming through clearly. Am I coming through well? Yes, you are. Yes. I, 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 got, I, I got the feeling that there was something someone else did not want you to say at that moment, talking of, to you, Kim. Yes. You got the feeling what that something one else had something to say? No, someone else did not wanted you to share the information. Ah, yes, that is possible. There is something in the atmosphere. I can hardly wait to get back to your regular channeling spot because the vortex down there is much better, and the interference in this room is high. So, mm -hmm. okay. okay, is Ron ready to ask a question? Katie, I, I think it was Katie first. Is it Caitlin? My bad. <laughs> it's all right. Um, well, I have three questions, actually. Um, last right. night, um, I had a dream that I was in, I don't know, I was with a few people, and then I kind of separated with them. Um, I was somewhere else, and it was kind of like a convenience store type thing, and I was seeing like Halloween costumes and stuff, and I remember <laughs> I heard the the word Dwarf Wars, and somebody from the colonies was talking about this, and I'm pretty sure like I knew there was a game going on of some type, and it was kind of like a like a play fighting game. It wasn't for real. Um, and there was just a whole bunch of nature spirits, <laughs> and they just start coming out and attacking us, and just like playing around. Um, I was I was just wondering if that was the Aaron Colonies or if it was uh, Gurk Vignir, because I know Gurk Vignir. Some of them don't really like putting up with um, certain nature spirits. <laughs> it's funny. The elementals can be annoying to the. <laughs> Perfect near people because not not because they are nasty or anything, but they no, they, they're just really curious. They're really curious uh, about your technology. Correct. They just distract them. Yes. <laughs> they distract them to annoyance. But um, 
because they're they're noisy and chattery and they ask questions and things of that nature. However, uh, elementals usually aren't allowed on the colonies when there's other people there. But they, you were right. Uh, they were there. Um, when? I'm not sure. Was that last night? You said yes. Yes, it was, it was last night, and I woke up, I was just laughing because um, I've had a few memories where I remember I saw like a, a, a pixie, it was blue, and there, um, it was with this gray, and this gray was working on this machine that had like a fan thing flowing around, and the pixie was like, what are you doing? How are you doing? What's this? What's that? And she just kept asking questions, and the gray got really annoyed with it. Yes, very annoying. Yes, because they there are questions that don't need to be answered at the moment. So um, they're just in the way, basically. So yes. yes, there was a short period of time that I see. Wait, good Oh, that's what happened. You have so many elementals around you that uh, they got taken along with you when they brought you uh, up to the. The, uh, oh, they took them bad. with you, and um, <laughs> they had to send them back separately. So, oh no! Oh yes, gosh! So it it was more or less they caught a ride with you. <laughs> um, and mm -hmm. yes, they were annoyed that they did that, but because they are not really supposed to be on the colonies. Yeah. Yes, I remember they were just jumping out and they were trying to run away and stuff. They were just playing around and I was like, what are you guys doing here? And I remember like, I just kept hearing the word, door four, door fours. And I was like, what? Well, and I was just laughing. I, the, the reference was that um, one of them has a past life in the door four, door fours. And um, it reminded him at, of that at that moment because it was an extraterrestrial looking area so um, mm -hmm. and there was some of that in that time so anyway I won't go into that but oh um, yes they there was a few that hitched a ride because they they saw that you were going to be um, <laughs> taken to the colony so they wanted to go and they went oh, oh dear okay um oh thank you for that uh, my second question is I think this is around like two months ago. Um, I was in class and I was just um, thinking about things, and then I was talking about telepathy with somebody through the Google chat, and I just immediately got this telepathic like it was real. It felt really real, and I was in this white room, and it was as if I was kind of waking up in a sense, like in a. It, I was in my body still, but it seemed like I was actually in that reality, two different realities at once, actually. Um, so this white room. And I remember there was different boxes that were clear, and they were embedded in these square platform things. So you could look into the boxes, and you could touch things that were different. You know, they were not exactly. Some of them were similar to human type objects, and some of them were not. There was water that was teal, and it had sparkles in it, and there was other things. But what really caught my eye was there was these white beings that they looked like grays of it, and they had almond black eyes, they were snow white, um, they had a round head, not exactly as round as grays, they, they're a little bit flatter and different, um, and they were just, they didn't have any clothes on, they were just, they looked like grays, really similar. Um, I was just wondering, uh, what were they, who were they, and... Those were Fendorians. Uh, the Fendorians can be very, very white. Yes. I was telling somebody before. Yes. Um, in fact, when if you were to touch their skin, it feels like plaster. Yeah. It, um, um, actually. Ac and um, and uh, it actually looks like what you would call plaster. Yes. Um, one of them that I actually saw, um, his skin looked a little chalky, and yes. yeah, it's I remember like, I saw that. You, so if you if you touched his skin, it was as if like a little bit would come off, or not a little bit, but like you know, you'd get like some on you or something. Uh, but what really um, was interesting is they were leading me into a different room, so I was wondering why were they um, associated with me, and what did they want to speak with me about? Or it was I don't know if you can talk about that at this time, but 
Well, I, I can tell you this. The Fendorians were not very interested in humans until recently. The last okay. couple of years, now they're... Their species, we'll just say that, to the <laughs> Earth atmosphere and around the world because they are now wanting to understand the the beginnings of your ascension. And they took you to the other room to do some experiments. But nothing painful. Or it was just uh, mostly uh, external experimentation. That's it. But you don't remember being there, do you? Um, no, I just... I, no, I did didn't know for a couple of days something was going on, though. So that you wouldn't be embarrassed or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so that is all. And th they are very curious beings, but very friendly, very high. Um, they're actually fifth dimensional. Mm -hmm. And to come to the third dimension and become solid is very difficult for them. I mean, uh, emotionally difficult for them, not... Uh, not actually technology wise but emotionally wise because it's the, the atmosphere is so much heavier and dense and many things about that are disconcerting to them so All right. you have to understand that but they, right. they're not mean or or belli uh, belligerent or anything like that they're no they were really, they were really kind actually yes. they um they have really strong connections to crystals and stuff so I was happy oh, to yes. To, yeah, so they, they've really got me hooked on that and uh, certain things. So. But um, so my main question was, um, Sky Elves, I recently have heard the name and that their, their species is kind of extinct. They were at some point, and I don't know why they're wanting co to contact me or what they bring that whole thing up for, but can you kind of elaborate on what they who they are or what what they wanted from me at least they're the sky elves you said the sky elves yeah um, sky elves they have something to do with if an aspect of me called Crystalla and she was an elf and I think she was one of the the last ones and then she died in the Aaron war um, so I don't know I'm kind of confused I on don't, that whole I thing I don't know anything about that I am sorry I will have to learn more before I can tell you, perhaps let me ask Jakur if she knows anything about that. Okay. Uh, they are not aware that that has been resurrected. You're right, that it is an extinct species. Unless someone has cloned DNA from the past, they would not exist. Oh my gosh. That's all. They will look into it. Yeah, I think I probably should too, because that's actually really interesting now that you just said that. Yes, they are. Uh, an extinct species is that, they do not exist any longer. Hmm. Unless there were some that were in hiding or of, the, of some nature of that sort. But as far as they know, they became extinct. Um, in the war, there was a virus that they caught, and it was very deadly to their species. Oh, that makes sense. And I feel like there was others that were trying to kill them off as well, because yes, their species the was really they prosperous. Were, but the actual killer was the disease. It became an epidemic. And all that was left the species died off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for answering my questions. That really means a lot to me. Um, I'm sorry the elementals kind of just hitched a ride. <laughs> I find it amusing. Now they're pretty they're pretty uh, oh gosh, I got caught and <laughs> they're looking at me that way now. I had no clue. I would have stopped them. <laughs> I, it was not your fault. You could not have stopped them, really. If they wanted to go, what they did was just attach to your spirit uh, <laughs> being moved. They, they could feel the movement of spirit, so they attached themselves to it. So. Oh, my God. So they went in spirit also. 
But they did not have to be asleep. Oh, yeah. Well, it was fun. It was still... I, oh, my gosh. Now I'm just getting more memories back from you even talking about this. So, yes. so yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. It was entertaining, but not for the not for the Grukvignerians, I'm afraid. No. They, 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 it was a little bit of a um, hassle. They always say that when they channel through me, especially um, Toad. He's like, I don't think they they really they're really annoyed with some of us. <laughs> and I was I was just laughing about it, and some other people were too. So they well, find it really funny. It's not that they don't love the elementals, but they are sometimes disobedient, and yeah. they should not have been on the ship. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Well, I'll I'll have to do some talking with them. They're just really happy, I guess. So. Well, there's much going on that they are pleased about. They've been making making some headway with the Earth in your area. So. Oh um, yeah, I know what you mean. There's a lot of weather. Um, yeah making some good headway with your area of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything, Lakesh. Um, You're welcome. I just want you to know, greatly appreciated that you came through today. I never get to really speak to you anymore. so, And many of us don't either. It is wonderful. Thank you for talking. No problem. Sharon, it's next. Namaste. Namaste. I'm still sending energy to the internet connection. Sabrina, are you there? Yes. Sharon, it's, it's next. <clears throat> Hello, Lakesh. Hello. My name is Sharon. I'm happy to speak with you. Hi, Sharon. Yes. Um, I feel... <clears throat> I, I had a few questions about meditation advice for myself, personal meditation advice. Yes. I feel a little bit of uh, like a disconnect in connectivity. I was just wondering if there's uh, belief systems or blockages or something that's interfering with my connectivity. I try to sit and be and be aware and um, I'm just feeling a little uh, bit of a disconnect. Let me ask you a question. Are you doing any breathing exercises? Yes, some. Um, Are you breathing deep in and breathing, exhaling very far out? I can improve that. I can, I can work on that. Let me tell you what I think is happening. I do not think you're becoming relaxed enough to get into the state of meditation. Therefore, I want you to do this. And when you breathe in, breathe in slowly and deeply and stop and count to three. When you breathe in as much as you can, count to three, then leave it out as far as it will go, as far out as it will go. Because two things are happening here. One, you are oxidizing your body and bringing in air into the system, which is also relaxing to the system and energizing at the same time. So you're activating the brain, you're activating the body, yes, and as you breathe out, you're releasing chemicals into the system that are for relaxation. I have given this example to other people, mm -hmm. that when, and others have given the same example that I've heard, And but when you are skidding on ice, you drive, correct? Yes. Or, or when you or slide, even when you're walking down the sidewalk and you slide <laughs> on some ice, do you not tense up because you think you're going to fall? Yes. Now what happens when you do not fall or when the when you're done sliding? Your body goes, ah, oh, and releases <laughs> these, releases the different things into your system that slow down the heartbeat and the thought processes and everything of that nature. Breathing out in a great, great deep breath actually releases some chemicals into the system and slows the heartbeat and calms you down. Do you understand? So if you do this several times, your body will be prepared for a meditation. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. 
Yes, and I believe the other thing that you need to do is concentrate only on one thing and find a room with no noise, no interference, nothing around, or put something over your ears so that you can only hear those things within your head that you are concentrating on. Yes, that's what I started doing as well, covering my eyes and ears. Correct. Yeah. Very good. Okay, okay fantastic. Um, I also had a question about... Um, uh, if you could enlighten me on a past life that may be affected my current life now. Which which past life is that? Um, I don't know. A, a highly influential one for my oh, current I see. life. Okay, one moment, please. There is a past life that does affect this one. It dealt with a business life where you had to prioritize a lot. Are you prioritizing a lot in this sign? <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> this is a, it's the lesson of prioritizing things and making sure that you're using your time wisely. Does that make sense to you? Oh, too much, yes. <laughs> Okay, this is what your the past life was about, how you were successful in business by doing such things as prioritizing. You do not write things down enough. <laughs> okay. You if you would like to, if you would like to be more successful in what you are pushing toward and like to prioritize more, make sure that you are writing down your ideas so you can go back to them. It's always best because sometimes if an idea is not written down it will be forgotten until a later date and it could have been used much earlier. <laughs> okay. And yeah. you've already experienced that. Yes, I have. Yes. So that is your past life that is that is good for this life. It was a your past business life with it was in Europe in the night oh no 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 1790s. So it, it, but you were a business owner, but you had to learn to prioritize. Even back then, priorities were important mm -hmm. because there was many more things to do than just the business back then. The family life was much more difficult because there was much more work, actual work and physical labor to be done before the business could be run properly. So you had to prioritize. And that is what this life is about for you as well. Prioritizing, organizing, and making sure that your thoughts are built properly into a, an, a wonderful um, now. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I've ex had that experience in my current life as well. <laughs> yes. That is why you, when you ask about that, it was about priority. Wow. Thank you very much. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm through with my question. Yes. Hello, Who am I speaking to? Uh, Zenaida. Ah, Zenaida, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Lakesh? This is first time talking to you. I know. How is your orb doing? <laughs> How's your orb doing? Oh, that's what I want to ask. Yes, I knew. <laughs> what is it that you want to know? I want to know about uh, there's an Egyptian god, which is uh, her name is uh, Shakvek. Shakvek. She's Lyran. Yes. Do I have? strong connection with her. I believe you do, but let me ask to her. She would know more. One moment. I seem to be talking to her a lot today. She's yeah. probably annoyed with me as much as the elves. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Ah, that is interesting that you should say that if there is a strong connection, 
you actually are related to her in a past life in that Egyptian world you ha you had you were some sort of relative to her and lived with her very closely actually I believe you were her father to come what for song yep you were her father what is his name She wants to know what the father's name was. Uh, Shakira is not telling me she is busy. Okay. But we can look it up. Yes, we can look it up. I cannot hear you very well. You seem far away. May I, may I ask the second question, please? Of course, of course. Thank you. Um, there is a name for inner child. For what child? Inner child. Ah. I do not know. I believe that if you would give your inner child a name, it would respond to that. But your inner child would have the same name as you, or the same name as the flame that is with you, the spirit within you, which is nameless until you are named. Do you understand? And so your inner child is actually maturing as you mature as well. But when you go back and speak to your inner child, do they not take you back to basics? Okay, it's uh, Makesh, is it right that we need to ask forgiveness to inner child? Because we always push it away, not listening, whatever the inner child is. Um, oh, no, no, no. The inner child is unconditional love. The inner child has unconditional love and needs no, needs no forgiveness from you. But if you would like to forgive those things that you put on the child after the child is an adult. After you've become an adult, you put many things on the child. Do you understand? Yeah, that's what she means. That is the only thing that you need to forgive. That, the yourself, not the inner child. The inner child will be, is fine. It has unconditional love. And all this you need to do is forgive yourself for those things or forgive others for, bring, for accepting their clutter or for accepting their whatever they gave you that hurt you. So now, all you do is forgive them and forgive yourself. Not as easy as it sounds, but it is what you must do. But the inner child has nothing to do with those things that you brought upon yourself or collected from the outside world. The inner child is still pure. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, the last question is, is there is a name for higher self? Yes. I'm wondering. Can I Everyone's I higher self has a name, but um, uh, like I can tell you right now that uh, Jim knows the name of all of his spirit guides, but not of his higher self. Now, why do you... The breaking up. ...speak, he just does not know his name. However, it will become aware of his higher self's name at the appropriate time. Now, if you do not know your higher self's name, that is fine. You can still speak to him would still get information from him. You can give him a name if you would like, and he, he will understand that, but he does have a name. And it may be an important name. We do not know until he tells us. The only way to find out your higher self's name is if he tells you. Or if someone else tells you, if he permits it. Thank you, Lakesh, very much. You are welcome.
I hear you better now. Yes. My last to you, and can you pass keys to the curb? <laughs> pass, pass what? Pass the keys and hacks to the curb. Ah, oh, yes, I will. You got all shook, Yanni. Ah, Katu. Okay. Um, I think uh, somebody wanted to do a follow up question. Um, Nisa, I think it was. Nisa! Hello! Hello! How are you, Lakesh? I am fine. How are you? I, I'm fine too. I have one question. Um, I have I wrote uh, an email to the colonies asking some help for uh, in some fields of my life. I, I wonder if uh, you or someone read it the email. I did not read it, but I someone from Gorkvik near may have. It would one moment. I do not read email very well. Okay. Ah, <sighs> yeah, When you were asking about a health question. Yeah, it's many. Yes. She said it was a health question and they sent you some energy. Uh, but if you would like to be more specific with Tepe. Tepe is actually is the more medical person in this area. And he did send you some energy. Oh, he sent you give all wash up free. Oh some you had a vitamin deficiency in one area which caused one of your problems. And and some extra energy just helped one of the other problems. But they will not discuss it with me in depth. But they do know of your problems. I do not know what they are. But they are health associated according to Jakar. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, yes, and some others. But anyway, I can ask here. Uh, I have some blocks in my life. Uh, for some years, I've had, had some problems in Ooh. some fields of my life. I wouldn't like to, to say which ones. And I wonder if it's caused by karma or uh, which past life, for example. Ah, um, maybe a lesson you know. that you have to learn. One moment, hold up. Mm. It is a several different things. It is it is several different things. There is a contract on some of that, and uh, there is a past life um, reoccurrence. That would be with your uh, association with a certain a certain person that is not a very nice person. Do you understand who I'm speaking of? A person here in my life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you understand who I'm speaking of? Mm, that is close to me. Fairly close, yes. Okay. And is that related to a past life? Yes, he is related to a past life. And is that interfering with my my happiness here in this life? And how can I... No. What you do is you build your own universe and push push that person out of it. Now, if they have their own universe to build, of course, and they may still come into it, but this will uh, push them out farther than they are now. If you create your own universe. Do you understand what I'm saying? You do have some, some power over this. You do. And so when you build your universe, you, you remove the things from your universe that you do not want in it. And that doesn't mean they will completely go away, but it does mean 
that they will not affect your universe the way that they had in the past. If there was some uh, overlapping or thoughts or bad things that were happening, they will they will be less involved in your universe. Does that make sense? Well, Hello? No, uh, it's difficult. Yes, well, it's not always easy, no. And there are some contracts that you have made lessons to learn, but there are some things with this individual that you have already learned. So you can m move past that. Can I break now this contract if I say I've learned a lesson and... Uh, you you know, have, that I cannot tell you because I've not known of anyone to break a contract in the middle of it. Okay. If I uh, learned a lesson. You may, there may be more lessons to learn with this contract. If, if, if the contract has already been met, then you have nothing to worry about. If the lesson's already learned, then it won't move forward. But it, if the lesson is not already learned, it will continue. So, you see, I believe that if, you're, if you've already fulfilled the contract, you still wouldn't have it, anything to do with uh, learning the lesson. Does that make sense? Yes. So there must be something else there. But uh, perhaps we should speak later. Okay. I have a feeling that uh, I, I there's things that you want to say, but you don't want, want to say them in front of a bunch of people. Yes, true. <laughs> it's true. Yes, I just wonder how can I come over uh, all this, these problems and live a life. The life there is a I way. Hmm. There is. But um, I think that that is more of a personal conversation because there are things that you need to tell me that I do not know. Okay. So I could not give you the full information without knowing the, uh, some particular things, and I do not want to ask them. So uh, at this point, we will talk later. Maybe I, I will have Jim call you. Okay. Uh, I have uh, one more question. Um, yeah. It's about the improvement of spiritual improvement, or I don't know, ascension. I mean, I feel the um, one part of my life um, I was developing some, you know, third eye and, um, yes. you know, and suddenly that stopped and now I want to go back and improve again those fields of my life and I'm blocked. So is one more block I have in my life. Okay. I wonder, yeah. Let me tell you what to do. Do some intention meditations about that. I know meditation doesn't answer all the questions. But let me tell you this. You may not feel like you're moving on, but you are moving on. And you really are not blocked. There might be a temporary setback, but you are really not blocked. Let me explain that. With the fourth dimensional energy activated, you can't help but move forward. And you're learning the different lessons that you are to be learned. And one of these lessons is that you actually aren't blocked. So the, the, the lesson to learn today is how to move forward without feeling this blockage. Because there really is no, nothing blocking you. It, you are blocking yourself, if anything. But you are moving forward. I can see that. I can see that you are still moving forward. So do not do not be dismayed about all these things. They they're all a smoke screen, as they would call it. These things holding you back, you can move out of. But it seems very difficult, or it seems like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. However, let me tell you that I will shine some light for you to see. Do you understand? Yes. And do not be dismayed because you are moving forward. I see your progress. You are moving in the way that you are supposed to move for this particular time. This is the time when you are moving maybe slower. Maybe you do not feel as much. Maybe there is more aggravation. Maybe more doubt. 
that these are things you will come through because you are an enlightened being. You have the light within you. The fourth dimensional energy is activated. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I will help you. I will help you. I Thank can you. do things with you that not many people can. When there is a time when you are particularly low, call on me and I and I will I will do something for you. But I can't tell you what that is right now. But I will I do have something in mind. Thank you, Lakesh. You are welcome. Just one more question, please. Uh, do, uh, do I have connections with Pleiadians? Oh, of course you do. Yes. And you've known that. <laughs> you knew but that. Uh, what connection? I don't know. You don't know what connection, but you felt the connection. Um, you do have... Uh, you've yes. had several Pleiadian lives, at least four or five. I have? Yes. And so you do have a couple connections to the Pleiadian world. And right now there is someone that was a brother to you in a in a Pleiadian life that is now a female in Pleiadian existence. And yes, and they are connected to you. So, right now. Okay. Um about my uh, DNA, uh, do you, can you tell me the percentage of DNA? I, you know, I do. I can't do the DNA anymore. They don't let okay. me do that. So you'll have to talk to to Kerr about DNA. Okay. They block those. They block those files from me, and we don't. It, we're not. I'm not permitted. So, um, because I'm not very good at it. I read. Okay. I, many different things into it. I see too many things and I, I add things and subtract things. It's, they're much better at it. So it never wasn't, it never was anything that interested me very much anyway. But um, Takur will help you with that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Thank um, you for the help. Much love to you. Much and love. You. Yes. Um, Lola Kesh. Um, yes. Karen had a question. She had, she thinks it's a dream, but she's not sure. She says, can you ask this question? I had a dream two nights ago about an object being chased by a fighter plane. The object looked like a cigar-shaped vehicle. In my yes. Opinion, we were witnessing the uh, vehicle struggling. We then saw it being ejected from the vehicle. The vehicle then seemed to disappear into the light vortex and was gone. The fighter jet flew back, and for a few times, then it was gone. Was this a dream, or did I witness something? Actually, it, um, it is similar to something that actually happened, but I believe it was a dream this time. But, it, but something similar has happened on your planet more than once. Um, these cigar-shaped ships, which will remain nameless at this time, um, uh, do exist, and they have been uh, chased by fighter pilots. But I believe nothing recent has happened. So perhaps that is a um, a dream of something that happened in the past. Does that make sense? Yes. Because there were actual incidents very similar to that. Very, very similar. Yeah. Um, um, the fighter pilot didn't disappear, but the the object did. Yes, in the in the actuality. Yes. All right, because she said that she also, she watched the uh, object struggle, and she was yeah. with somebody, and they were sending uh, angels to help them. Yes, that's. I ca I cannot. Um, say that that was not real, but I do not see anything of that nature happening in on your planet right at this time or within the last the last um, short period of time. So um, I would think that that is a recollection from the past. Okay. Um, now, I think that was it for her. I had a question if if you know anything about
sinkholes. Is sinkholes? Yeah. Did you say you went out of there for just a moment. I did not hear anything. If you know anything about, and that was the last thing I heard, and then you said sinkholes. Yes, sinkholes. You know, these big holes showing up all over the earth. Yes. Um, can you tell us anything about that? Well, you know that there's many species that live underground, under your planet, in the caverns and large areas under the earth. There are many places that are hollow under the earth, so uh, not the same concept as hollow earth, but it is a different concept with some of the same scenarios. The earth is not necessarily hollow, but there are many large areas in the earth where species do live, the draconians, the golden people of the Himalayas, um, but the, they, there is depressions under the planet and with the um, galactic energy and the wobble of the earth and all the different things that are happening some of these are caving in, but um, the ones that have uh, living creatures in are farther down so you're it's not caving in on the living creatures but in some of the upper areas where they did rituals and things of that nature because some of them come to the earth's surface to do rituals at one or two times a year now there's also a species under the Pacific Ocean the uh, boy, if we forget the name of them um, Oh, but anyway, they live down there, and they're actually helping you out with the radiation in the ocean a little bit because it affects them as well. So um, they're actually helping with that over on that side. But uh, what are they called? I can't remember. But anyway, there's so many different species. Sometimes I get, whew. So, uh, yeah, because, cause, um, you know, a lot of people are losing their houses and oh yes it is tragic but it is because of the many things that all contribute to this earth problem with the weather and the seismic and the volcanic and all these things they're all they're all put together and they cause many different things so does that enter your question to some degree yes yes it, it does now, um, I know Takur normally answers this, and if you can, it's okay. Um, I know that there's a lot going on with the Earth right now, and I get the feeling that there's a lot more. Yes, that is true. Oh, it's the Clares. That's where who lives in the Pacific. Never mind. Go ahead. There, there's a lot more um, happening. I can feel it. Yes. It's, it's much greater than you actually know. They do not share all that information with you. Yes. There is so much going on, and they do not want to frighten anybody or anything like that. Oh, they're telling me to shut up. Yes, I, I, I understand that. I, I know that, um, um, that they don't want to share, especially if they can do something about it, because <clears throat> I believe I was talking to Tucker um, the other day about it. Um, yes. But um, I know we were told to, um, I guess, send energy to the earth. Um, but it just seems, I, I don't know if there's anything we else we can do. Much prayer. Prayer is very powerful. Although some people do not believe that uh, meditation and prayer are powerful. They are very powerful things and they do work. The, because what you're doing is transferring energy into another another form. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You're actually transferring energy into a stronger, more concise form so that it can help greater. If, if you... We have done studies on your planet as well as ours about people that are being prayed for by many people and their progress is much greater 
because that power is condensed into one singularity, a single thought, and pushed into the one person, and they receive all the energy and intent of the energy. Okay. Continue. So be Prayer be is good, yes. Okay. Send Mother Earth any energy, anything that needs... Send it to Mother Earth. She has been so good to you, not to me, but to you, and my planet has been good to me, so I thank my planet as well, but send her energy. Okay. Thank you, Lakesh, and maybe, maybe once you're leaving, if you can do a, a prayer. Yes. I've been working. It's hard for me to concentrate all the time because I'm working on this internet connection that has been so difficult during this process. But it's it is improved as I've been working on it. Has everybody noticed that? Yes. Good. Uh, Savira, before you go, Lakesh, Savira has a question. Um, I think it's really important. It's about her health. Um, as she stated earlier, she hit her head. Yes. And it was really hard, and she asked Tepe about, let me just read the whole thing, <laughs> it's probably easier. Um, she said, speaking of Tepe, I asked him last night to scan me because I hit my head quite hard, and I thought he said to me that there was no damage done, just that my head would hurt for a few days. was wondering if that was from him, and he also, she also said she thought she would die if she fell asleep, but she asked Akur to ask Tepe to help her. And she was hoping that it was received by Depe. Yes. One moment and I will ask them. <laughs> Tibet says it will be all right. You will have a bump on your head, but it will be fine. He had sent some healing energy to you already. All right, I must go now. But anyway, yes, you will be fine, Safira. All right, thank you for answering that question for her. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, Lakesh. Thank you for answering all our questions there. Thank you, Lakesh. Much love. Thank you, Lakesh. Okay. I'm looking Bye, forward Lakesh. to to meet you in my dreams. Thank you, Lakesh. Much love to you as well. Thank you. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. 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 Oh, hello. Hello, Tim. Hey. How are you doing? Hmm? Oh, yes. Um, oh, well, you watch. Work on yes. Thank you uh, for that. Lakesh did a really great job today. Thanks. Um, the people in the room were watching him work on the internet system. They thought he that was rather interesting. He just said to me, he did a lot of work on the internet system. <laughs> so, anyway, um, hopefully he did a good job, yes. And um, uh, do you want to close in prayer today, someone who volunteers? Okay. Okay. All right. Francine has to go. Bye-bye. Johnny is still here.
do you want to do a Arcturian prayer or someone else want to do a prayer? Anyone? I'll, I'll start it. <laughs> um. Now that Lakesh is gone, he, he's not working on the internet anymore. Okay. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> he kept trying to keep You it can tell you're coming off now. Oh, gosh. That was interesting. All right. I, I mean, seriously, the whole time he was here, he was working on the internet. So, and as soon as he goes, it's not working right. So. ここ、サリオとこなかった。ゆりやがなつくと、このことたなにあり。たしおのこしなつ。ゆりやさかきやけ。ゆこと、サリオこと。おさなきやた。あらなそうとこ。このかたにあせやた。あらなつくと。さりおとのの。こんな感じのそこのの。ポスカリアのそこと。ありおそこなのに。適応とこうさらなかった。あなたとさかたにおのこすこと。ポルオスとのこと。あなさかて。適応そのなこと。だかとおらなに。適応そうなきやた。朝なく。おらなきやたかすよとこ。おらなきやたかすよとこ。おらなきやたかすよとこ。おらなきやたかすよとこ。おらなきやたかすよとこ。おらなきやたかすよとこ。おらなきやたかす
And we are those people that will connect with you, even though we are not part of who you are. But yet, as a community of the universe, we will be part of you. Let us become a greater science within ourselves. Let it be part of our biology and mentality to be connected in any way possible through the energies of the sciences and the energies of the universe. We also look into your eyes and see the warmth of your soul and bring that out and bring it to us and return with fire of our own to give to you, energy of our own to bring to your world. With much love and gratitude, we look at you and thank you for the lessons that you teach us, as well as lessons that we give you to learn. It's to be understood, but not necessarily to resonate with. So please love, understand, grow in wisdom and goodness. And we will help you to raise to the standard that you belong. Okay, I, can I do a prayer too? Yes. とさかたけるごととこさらけやたけるごのこするわたかてやたこするこにやたかさかとことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことことこと